How's it going, Grey Boys? It has been quite a while, but it's finally time for our national championship game. Uh, we are making our way through the playoffs. Honestly, a little bit easier than most people would have expected, but it was a 21-7 win against the four seed Georgia Tech. And right away, we can load into this utility tool and we'll go ahead and set up this final stage or the third stage, I guess I should say, uh, of the national championship. So here we go, loaded in against Georgia, the number seven seed in this playoffs. They were not expected to come out and do well, uh, but it's a close win against Clemson. Uh, this is saying 13-13. I think that they won it like 14-13 or something, but whatever. The tool is never incorrect. And we'll be playing at SoFi Stadium there in Inglewood. And I gotta say, USC I thought was going to be the hardest that we would face up until this point. And we steamrolled them. And Georgia Tech I thought was going to be super easy. And while we did hold them to seven points, it was only a two-score victory. So I have no idea what to expect with Georgia. The Bulldogs have made an impressive run through their side of the bracket, taking out the number two and the number three seed. Now they're on against number one. Can they prove that they deserve to be in these playoffs and maybe that they deserve a national championship. I'm not sure. We'll go ahead and save that up. and We can load back into the dynasty and there's the matchup against the 12 and three Georgia Bulldogs. And I'm curious to know what ends up happening here. We are not favored to win. They're the higher overall team though, just a B plus. Uh, statistically, we look better in a few categories, mostly on defense, but they have a pretty solid defense themselves. Uh, who have they played this year? I know they have some impressive wins. Uh, 12 and 3. Three losses quite a bit to still make a national championship game. But here we are. Losses to number 6, Tennessee, on the road. Loss to number 18, Auburn, who we also lost to. And a loss in overtime against Army on the road. So, uh, one of those is not like the other, but... They have since made their way through, beating Georgia Tech, Auburn, Cincinnati, uh, and so, well, those Auburn and Cincinnati actually are different. It's it's Georgia Tech and then what Texas and Clemson, but that's just because of the way that the playoff tool works. But still, uh, an impressive schedule. Meanwhile, for us, we've kind of steamrolled opponents uh, all season long, except for this Auburn game. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, we beat a ranked UCF, lost to Auburn. Auburn, I thought, was going to win the whole thing. They were looking great until the last three weeks of the season. Beat Clemson, who did make it to the playoffs, but couldn't make it. And it's just, I mean, all around, a lot of wins, a lot of good-looking stuff. The question is, can we do it? We might as well just get straight into it. No need to dilly-dally around here when we have a national championship game to play as Georgia is a 90 overall to our 79 with a 91 offense and an 88 defense. Uh, I gotta say, I'm feeling somewhat confident, but I could be a little bit more confident. We're gonna keep it pretty traditional, just going with the silver helmets, and for Georgia, well, it's Georgia, so we're just gonna give them their playoff away uniform, and we'll let them stick with that and see if we can get it done. Again, coming in, they are uh, not a great offense. They're running the ball pretty well, especially compared to us, and their defense is just really good. I would say our defense is better. The only thing they're better at is their pass defense, but we're not too far off of that. But first in points, first in yards allowed, and first in rushing yards allowed is going to help. Uh, their top players for next year, much higher than ours, a 91 overall center, a 90 overall wide receiver, and an 89 overall left guard. So the offensive line is looking pretty strong, and they do have some... Ooh, they got a lot of injuries. Middle, Two middle linebackers out, and a right guard. Those are pretty big injuries as well, so definitely going to help us as we... Uh, Try to fight for a national championship at Eastern Michigan. So here we are. Uh, okay, well, it said SoFi Stadium, but we have loaded into Levi Stadium. So I, I don't entirely know what the deal is with that. As long as we can play the game, maybe they had a, a last minute issue at SoFi and we just had to move north uh, a couple hundred miles. Uh, <laughs> we are going to get this one underway with a five mile an hour wind. And it's going to be RJ Rivera back to return the opening kickoff of the national championship game. Can he create some havoc? Can he force some miracles? No. Uh, I think that was Gentry just completely whiffed on a block. I will say no matter what, win or lose, next year is going to be a much more difficult year. I do feel like this year for having a 78 overall team, this was a little bit too easy uh, you know, using Seagater sliders, I thought maybe we would be fine, but we kind of steamrolled some opponents. 
So it sounds like there will be an update to the Seagater sliders soon. Uh, so we'll definitely be using those and seeing how those feels. Even making uh, slight adjustments to make them more difficult as we'll hand this one off to RG Rivera. Second and six, he's got a first down a little bit more. Alongside the slider changes, I'm going to make a couple of house rules to make things more difficult for us in game. But I think you guys are going to have to wait until next season, which hopefully doesn't take like two months as... Uh, okay. Maurice throws an accurate throw to Derek Bentley for his first pass of the day. Getting a lot of pressure in the back uh, backfield there for Georgia. So far, I'm not seeing anything that worries me too much from this Bulldogs offense, but you never know as let's uh, try to give it to Rivera out towards the edge, trying to follow the blockers. His, he's not going to have anywhere to go. No speed. It's a loss of a yard, and it's third and long. This might be a risky decision, but uh, from the, what is this, the 34-yard line, we're going for it on third and eight, a slip screen, and this is going to be four down territory unless the result of this is bad, and that's pretty bad. <laughs> Great play from number 66 there to break up the screen. We lose four yards, and we're going to have to punt this one away. So it's not a three and out as they're going to bring their pump block, and we'll just try to drive this one deep, force the fair catch, and see if the defense can come out and do something big for us. They'll start the drive from the 31. So this is going to be interesting. We know that this is a team that likes to run, and they've run pretty successfully all year, but they go to the air, and Ray Vincent, Ryan Vincent, sorry, has to throw that away immediately. I would say that's a successful start. Still this split backfield here, expecting the run. It is going to be a handoff, and we're going to meet him in the backfield for a loss of one. So maybe a battle of defense early in this one is George has a third and 11 to try and convert. <laughs> And it's the Bulldogs going into the hurry up, looking to find some success with the no huddle. As I'm going to try to bring pressure, quarterback all the time in the world gets it off, but it's green there to make the tackle. We give up six yards, but we force the fourth down. That's almost certainly going to be a punt. And so once again, one of the most uh, electric players in college football will have some sort of chance to return on this one as he could have some decent blocks as well. Or he can muff it. RJ Rivera, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> oh, it's worth noting that uh, I haven't played this game in probably a month or so, so I might be a little bit rusty on some of these moves. Passing the ball might have to become a, a big option for us, but we're going to continue to try to run as it's a triple option on first down. Hand it off to the fullback, Robertson, and Jeremy gets just back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe it would be wise to go to the air in this situation to get Maurice State a little bit more warmed up, but it's a counter to RJ Rivera. Got to give it to your best player on offense, and in this case, it works out pretty tremendously. Gain of eight there, third and two. I'm just expecting the awareness of this defensive line to be pretty high, so I don't know if a lot of screens will work. I was contemplating a mid-screen, but instead we'll be looking to throw over the middle. That one could be picked off, but Curtis makes the right move, and it's a good throw from Maurice Tate to get us to midfield. The way the linebacker was shadowing the route there, I thought for sure I had just thrown an interception, but we are the first team into enemy territory on the day. So we give it to RJ Rivera up the middle for four. We are just inching our way towards the Eagles green end zone. So we're going to throw, throw a little screen, and Stone doesn't have anything doing for him. That's going to be a loss of three, and now it's third and nine. We have just the slightest wind out here today, so I don't know what that's going to do for field goal chances, other than I know that we are way too far away for a field goal right now. And again, we give it to Stone, and he makes up the loss. Gain six, and we're going to go for it here, fourth and four. Murray State actually starting the game five of five through the air is a great sign. Let's bring Stone in motion, maybe try to confuse the defense a little bit, open up this read option space, and it's going to be Murray State keeping it. Is the blocking going to be good enough? It is. We can slide down for a first down. That's a big conversion. Oh, if we can get on the board first, that would be huge. I'm going to put that uh, idea that this defensive line is going to be really smart to the test. Little wide receiver mid-screen. It's open to Jeff Fontenot. He's got some blocks downfield, and Fontenot's got 13. Just how we drew it up. It seemed like they were eager to bring some pressure, and it didn't work out as we'll go play action in this one. Rushing five, it looked like, and just waiting. B is open. Not open. Picked off. That was a great dive. Ball was a little bit behind him. That was too tight of a window to try to throw to. I forced that one. Georgia ball inside their own five. Uh, this is going to get interesting. Well, they're at the three-yard line. That's such an annoying mistake to make. I'm calling this a run up the middle. We'll see if we can do anything to cause the safety, and we hit him at the line. He's going to be just barely past the goal line. Second and 12 and a chance to the safety again. 
that's actually going to end our first quarter. So Georgia's going to have to think about this one for a second. We're going to hopefully get the defense nice and rested up and ready to make a big push to try and score the first points in the national championship. I don't know how to feel about this one. We are expecting the run up the middle. We'll see what we can do as they're going to audible out. And we'll see again what we can do here. Looks like it could be a pass from the quarterback. He's going to step back, looking for it all the time in the world. He's got a man open. Logan needs to make this tackle, and he does. So they get out of immediate danger, but just past the five-yard line now. I would call that a pretty smart audible as third and six. We're going to again try to bring some pressure. Quarterback stepping back to throw. No time to get to him, and Gay catches it, but he's short of the line to gain. So we don't get the safety, but the defense holds. I don't know. We're going to just try to block this. I don't expect anything to happen, but we have blocked one of these somewhat recently, so let's give it a shot. Green coming down. He gets it away cleanly, and RJ's going to field it at the 45. If he can make some people miss just like that, that's a huge move. RJ Rivera has us almost in scoring position, and RJ Rivera gets chased out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Well, if you needed a big play to spark the offense, that might have been it, as we are definitely in field goal range at the very least, and I would take that as the first points of the game. RJ stumbling his way forward, gets four, and now we're inside the 10. And on this second and six, we're going to him again. On the counter, cutting it upfield. RJ breaking a couple of tackles. It's first and goal. Well, I'll tell you what, I would love to continue to hand it off to RJ Rivera but it's time to give Robertson a couple of chances up the middle on the fullback dive. First attempt, he gets us two yards closer, knocking on the door. And the Bulldogs may be unsure if they can stop this one on the second attempt. They got to know it's coming and they do it. Robertson dropped maybe for a couple of inches lost. Well, we're going to come out and try this. They are stacked up over the line. I'm not sure how this one goes, but Robertson gets in. Oh, I was certainly not confident there. Offensive line gets enough of a push. 7-0 Eastern Michigan. Just like that, we are in the driver's seat of the national championship here. Mays is going to try to return this one. Not a great kick from us, and he's getting some good blocking, some strong running. Okay, decent return for Georgia. We haven't really seen a full drive out of this offense, so I'm curious what these guys are going to bring. It feels like a run. Could be a counter here. They bring a man in motion. We'll try to cover him properly. And this one is going to be a huge cap for Boyd up the middle as he just kind of darts around and finds 16 yards. Darrell Boyd, again, one of the better rushers in the country right now, getting it done. They're going to hand it off to him again. And he's got a convoy out in front of him. Breaks a tackle. 14 more added on. Something has got to give on this. They're going to go with an option. Boyd not getting it just yet. Quarterback cutting it back inside. Makes a man miss. And Ryan Vincent's got five. A little bit of a fire lit under this Georgia offense as they are starting to kick it into gear. Stepping back to pass all the time in the world. This one could be picked off and Green drops it. Oh, that could have been a pick six. He high pointed it but couldn't hold on. Oh, for two on third downs. This one's a third and five. I don't know what they can get out of this one. Trying again to bring some pressure on this quarterback. I'm expecting a throw, and they will step back looking to get rid of it. Quarterback has to get rid of it, and it's Boyd breaking a tackle and getting run out of bounds, picking it up. He's going to put the team on his back at this rate. Second, he went out into the flat. I knew that we were in trouble because we were just not lined up well to cover that. This one, a hurry up. They're going to hand it off to him, and defense swarming still gives up two yards. We haven't yet found the answer to stop these guys. As again, they will step back looking to throw. And that one is going to be a huge catch. Avery Binkley out of position. Jacob Peram gets it into the five for a first and goal. Well, we can safely assume that they are going to continue to go to Boyd, I'm sure. But no, they step back to throw. Quarterback all the time. They're all the out route open. Threw it a little bit late. Didn't find the end zone on the play. It's still alive for the defense here as they continue this hurry up. We got to bring all the pressure in the world here, I think. It would be foolish of them not to just try to run, but we dial up the pressure in their deep, their offensive line. I don't know. I mean, they have an injury. They have a right guard out, but that was pretty bad. Well, we've managed to uh, hold them now to a third and goal. Man coverage. Oh, well, that's going to allow us to go back into the nickel. We were in the goal line, but a false start from two of the guys on the offensive line there. The pressure of the situation getting to these Georgia players. 
as they will be stepping back probably to throw now on this third down. No, it's a handoff, a little bit of a mid-draw. He's breaking tackles, and he's into the end zone. Brandon Neal, no way should have gotten nine yards there, but just kept the legs moving, showed some strength, and it's a tie ball game. Well, seven all, minute and 45 left in the half. We need to score. Georgia gets the ball to start the third quarter. Anything that we can do to open up the lead before the half would be massive as Sarge just kind of ran into a brick wall there. Last drive ended with a nice touchdown, but before that, uh, Maurice threw an interception. I don't think I want another one of those, but I'm going to continue to pass in. That was a terrible throw, but Stone comes down with it. I don't mean to be targeting Jason Stone this much, but he's making some big plays. Because of my incompetence earlier, we do only have two timeouts for this drive as I hit the wrong button. Stone, I don't know how he almost came down with that. I wanted to throw it to, I think it was B on the right on that curl. Instead, I've got Maurice out here trying to throw more and more interceptions. Let's bring Brian Curtis in motion. Running it with RJ Rivera, and he's got some space. Cuts it inside. He's almost got a first down. But the clock will be moving as it's third and inches. Curious to see what we can do. I don't expect a whole lot. Maybe a little bit of a scramble. This seems like an opportune time for... Uh, that sort of option with Maurice. As we just slide down and stop the clock with a first down. Nobody really feeling it yet on offense. We haven't had a player that feels like they're going to take over the game. As I will just go short dump off. We only got a yard out of that, but it gets us out of bounds. And we can kind of refocus up here. And we're going to continue to throw. Derek Bentley in at the running back position. I'm kind of looking at Jody Gentry to see what he does. But the pressure's there immediately. Maurice taking sack for nine yards. Nothing that we could do. Going to come out in the hurry up and try to salvage this one now. It's third and 19. It's going to take a miracle to even stay alive on the drive. But they left Brian Curtis wide open. He breaks a tackle even. 22 yards and we convert on third down. I'm looking for a home run now. We'll see what the safeties on either side do. It's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. No, we took another sack and I got to take the timeout. That was horrendous. Second in 22, 35 seconds. They're the uh, secondary is pretty solid, but they miss cover Jeff Fontenot. Just like that, man. We got to get down to get big plays, I guess. It completely beats me. But with 30 seconds left, we'll snap the ball. Looking back, pressure going to start to come. I'm just throwing this one away. I didn't feel comfortable there at all. Definitely in a spot where we can't afford to take a sack with only one timeout left. So strategically throwing the ball away, hoping for the best outside the pocket, trying to extend the play, and why might have been coming open, but again, getting rid of it, and it's third and 10. We continue to see plays like this from the Georgia defense, where they just kind of, they give up a few plays, and then they'll refocus in, and we'll be in trouble. This one's going to be not who I was trying to throw it to. I don't know how somebody didn't come down with that football. Uh, this is not the way I wanted to do this, but 15 seconds left. We got to come away with points, and it's 4th and 10. So we kick the field goal right through the uprights. Looks good, 10-7, but George is going to have the chance to take the lead. It's up to our defense now in a spot where you don't necessarily want them to be in the national championship game. We will go ahead and boot this one away. George has all their timeouts. We want them to return this to burn a couple of seconds off the clock. Because they're going to have a couple of shots at maybe some Hail Marys as yeah, it's a decent stop. But nine seconds. Hopefully we don't give up any points. This one also might kind of uh, hurt me. Okay, looks like they're going to try to run it here. I could be in a lot of trouble. We're there to break it up. Oh, I was offside. I thought I jumped it perfectly. Oh, this might change what Georgia decides to do here. First and five with six seconds left. They might throw one up. Mm, nope, looks like it's still just going to be a run. We're going to allow that. I don't need to get too cute. Though I will try to jump the snap again and prevent it from becoming too big because he's got a bit of a convoy. Terrell Boyd has had some big plays. They took a timeout with one second left. <laughs> this is what I was worried about. And now they're going to have a chance at, you know, a somewhat reasonable Hail Mary. Maybe we can get to the quarterback and stop him. We haven't had a whole lot of pressure or a success getting pressure to him. This one thrown all over the place. Whitaker deflects it. Can't come down with it. And it's incomplete as we will end the half in that note. I don't know. Feeling a little bit weird. Up three points. But again, the Bulldogs get the ball to start the third quarter. 
this one feels odd to me. Our offense has shown streaks of brilliance uh, and has also looked pretty awful at times. Their defense, the exact same thing. Their offense, the exact same thing in our defense. It's just either uh, every squad. You either look really good for a couple plays or you look really bad for a couple of plays. We've just been fortunate enough to come away with more points than they have. Uh, mostly because of that punt return after the almost safety. Regardless, though, we got two quarters to play in this national championship game. So we're going to try to get that done and hope that we come out on top. Because, man, we've been looking for a national championship for a long time. It's about time we got our hands on one. So here we go. Booting it off. Booting it away. Kicking it off. <laughs> Clark. Puts this one down to the goal line. That's good news as Neal's going to return it. Napoleon Sandcastle gets down there. Yeah, we're going to hold him to a 22-yard return. That is pretty good. So here we go. First and 10. We know they have a somewhat dangerous passing attack, but it's the option that's going to gash us on the first play. Is that boy that is? Jarrell, another 8-yard carry. That puts him at 49 yards on 7 carries. When their starting running back is averaging 7 yards per touch, you know you're in some sort of danger. Second and two, maybe expecting them to continue to go to the hot hand, but they will hand this or will, they will throw this one over the middle. Jenkins wide open, breaks a tackle. He's got the speed. It's up to Napoleon Sandcastle. The Frenchman can't. No, oh, he just brings him down. 60-yard reception for Peter Jenkins, though, and Georgia looking to score early. We are so lucky that Napoleon has been eating all his escargot and is awfully fast at the moment because that could have been six for Georgia as Logan comes in and makes a hit on Boyd at the line of scrimmage. Definitely expecting them to continue to pass, but we'll see. No, this one a handoff. Boyd gets met by Sandcastle. He's maybe thinking he's got to do it all right now. Well, this is certainly interesting. Third and 13. They're going to step back to throw that corner route wide open. Touchdown to Jeremy Gay as he has made a couple of big catches for these guys. Ryan Vincent, 8 of 11 through the air, finds his first touchdown, and the Bulldogs are going to take a four-point lead. That is exactly what we didn't want having happen immediately out of the gates on this half. Now we're on the back foot, and RJ Rivera needs something good for us as, no, the two kickoff returns we've had with him have not gone well. Well, 14-10. If we don't find the end zone for the rest of the game, I don't think we win this. So we're going to maybe be a little bit aggressive in the play calling. Again, outside the pocket waiting. And we get sacked. Wow, they stepped up. I was going to try to throw down a miracle pass, and it just, oh, that's a disaster. These guys are holding us a little bit too easily as we will try a read option on second and 17. Maurice Tate keeping it. He's got a blocker or two out in front of him, and he's going to make it all up with an 18-yard first down carry. I don't know what it is about this game. Every time we give up a huge loss, we immediately get a huge gain back. Uh, I don't know. We got to find a way to harness that one. Uh, kind of a motion option pass. We're going to give it to Chris Walker, who stays in bounds just for a yard. I was just a little bit late making that read, so he didn't have a chance to really get the head of steam built up as we will go. Play action. Second and nine. Waiting, waiting, waiting over the middle age. Coming up. Stone almost comes down with that. That was bobbed around five times. Oh, that would have been a huge catch. Shades of uh, Miracle of Jordan Hare or something. <laughs> Georgia fans taking cover right now because they thought the worst was going to happen. Third and nine, stepping back to throw. Going to give it to Curtis, and he can't hold on to it. Oh, no. I thought that was the perfect drop, but the safety broke it up. Fourth and nine. I just don't know if I can trust the offense to get it done here, so... We're going to boot this one away and hope for the best. As this one trying to get it a little bit low. It's caught on the run. But a fair catch, thankfully, from Neal. Oh, that's... We're in a tough spot now. Kind of had a feeling that Georgia was not going to be an easy game, even compared to the other ones that we've played as on this first down. Kind of expecting a run, but they send the... Ooh. Okay, they, they were trying to send it downfield, but just a dropped pass. Open receiver on that one as well, so you know that they're going to be a little bit upset at the result of that play. Kind of expecting a run, maybe a counter on second and ten, so we're bringing up some pressure. It's an option. Quarterback again cuts inside. How does he complete that pitch? Oh, that should have been our ball. He just lobbed it up there, and his man came down with it. That is absolutely ridiculous, and just like that, Georgia third and seven should have been third and 20. It should have been our ball. They're going to complete it to Perea, but thankfully he was coming backwards. Fourth and five is a big decision for the Bulldogs. And they are going to elect to bring out the punt team. 
We're in the safe zone because I, I just don't trust these guys right now. I can see them going a little bit tricky, but it is going to be the punter kicking it away. And RJ Rivera, risky to field this one. I don't know. Yeah, we got an extra yard out of it. I don't know if that was worth it, though. We're now midway through this third quarter. Nothing to show for it and a huge drive. Once again, we've been given a chance by the defense. We'll see if we can make the most out of it. It really just depends on what happens on this play. Second and eight. We're going with the toss. The blocking is nowhere to be found. RJ Rivera absolutely sent to the shadow realm on that one. But I wouldn't be too worried yet. It was a big loss, which means we are set up for a big gain. Five wide for Maurice Tate as the pressure is coming. And right bumper is open. Stone can't come down with it. Oh, I was late making the throw. It's fourth and a mile. I'm going to be forced to punt this one away. No chance we can go for it in this situation. We'll see maybe if we can drive it down there. No, that one was awfully catchable. And Neil is going to have Georgia in our territory with an eight-yard return there. And we are starting to feel the pressure. So what is going to be the result of this? I could see another option play being run here. Uh, it is going to be kind of handed off. Boyd getting some massive stiff arm cheese. He got met a yard downfield and ended up getting 10. Oh, it's time to bring the pressure. We have to hit these guys with a couple of big plays. So... Safety blitz might be the key as quarterback scrambling around in the pocket. We're going to be able to get to him. Loss of three. That's a good start. At the moment, Georgia has the wind in their face. So we'll see if we're able to keep them out of field goal range. I don't know how good their kicker is. I'm going to assume pretty good. But Boyd, well, Boyd's going to have something else to say about it because this man is just on a mission right now. Third in three in field goal range. All to play for on this down. We're going to jump it in Sandcastle. At least slows him down so that Royal can finish the job. Fourth and seven. That was huge. Now the field goal formation comes out for Georgia. Can they take a touchdown lead in the closing stages of this third quarter? It's up. It looks good. And it just barely had the distance. 17 to 10 Bulldogs lead. Well, this might be the last chance for the offense to really have an impact on this game. If we're unable to tie it up, at least bring it back to a four-point deficit, we are in big trouble. Still really haven't seen anything incredible from the offense, but it's time for somebody to step it up. Trying the play action outside the pocket, waiting, waiting, waiting. X may be coming open. Jeff Fontenot comes down with it. 15 yards. It's going to be about the improvis improvisation at this point, I think. Anything we can do to kind of mix up this defense is going to be necessary. We'll try a triple option. Maurice Tate keeping it. Waiting, waiting. Could have pitched that one out to Derek Bentley, but we'll take the first down and the ball security. And I want to get off this one final play in the third quarter. We're looking for it all. Safety is not really all that deep on this play. That could be huge for us. Just waiting, 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 waiting. That's not the one. Or maybe it is. Derek Bentley came down with it as we just lobbed it up to so 22 yards to end the third quarter I thought I threw another pick thankfully we're still alive but uh, still down a touchdown into the fourth quarter we go clutch skill activated for Georgia no such thing for us as it's five wide for Maurice State stepping back waiting oh two of our receivers ran into each other Mike Tyler had good separation but only gets two yards we don't need the home run ball, but at this point, I'm going to say it is four down territory. No field goals for us. What can the offensive line do? Great blocking, great vision from RJ Rivera to see where the hole was opening up, and he gets us a first down ever closer. And from the 16-yard line, we still can pick up one more first down inside the five there. That is massive. As again, it's a triple option. Maurice Tate waiting, gets the pitch off. RJ Rivera is not going to have the speed to get around the corner and score, but he does get a couple of positive yards. I think we just got to keep this ball on the ground for now. We have not thrown very well in the red zone. Derek Bentley, though, that's huge for Georgia. Tackled him for a loss of four. It's third and ten. So what can we do through the air? Or maybe with Maurice State's legs. Pressure's coming immediately. I'm, I'm running for it. Maurice State, that's a first and goal as he gets out of bounds. Oh, man, he hasn't had a whole lot of success doing that, but it came up clutch. And we might be five yards out, but we're going to give... Robertson an early chance at this one a fullback dive up the middle you never know when he's going to get a huge chunk but it's just a yard and you know what I'm I'm going to be stubborn we're just going to continue to give it to Robertson 
Our offensive line showed a big push earlier in the game. I think they can do it again as he got two more. It's about a yard and a half short with two attempts at it. And I don't know if this is going to be a bad decision in mixing it up or a good one, but we're going to give it to Derek Bentley and let Robertson be a lead blocker on one of these plays. And it's enough to get into the end zone. Derek Bentley hit as he's crossing the goal line, but that'll tie it up midway through this fourth quarter. Well, let's go ahead and boot it away. 17 all. Georgia in prime position to win this national championship game if their offense can get it done here. Honestly, if I was Georgia, I would maybe think about starting to burn the clock in this situation. Now, you don't want our offense to get the ball again, I would think, as they are going to have all the time in the world. It's a risky throw, and Mike Moore almost picks it off. Ooh, that was dangerous. That didn't seem like the right play call to me on first down at your own 25, but what do I know? Second and 10, they're gonna step back once again and trying to cover everything. Wide open over the middle is Mays. They're out to the 45, just like that. Defense maybe starting to get a little bit tired, but everybody's starting to feel themselves at the same time. So who's going to make the big play? There it is, Logan crashing the party, stopping Durrell Boyd at the line. Curious to see if he could possibly do that again. Second and 10, they are going to hand this one off. Nobody really there, Whitaker's slowing him down. Boyd gets four, but it's third and six now. And I would be feeling the pressure if I was these guys. What can we do to stop it? On this crucial third and six, they're gonna step back looking to throw and it's Mays wide open on that quick slant route. He breaks a tackle and he's across the 25. Well, at this point, two minutes and 30 seconds left. I'm kind of thinking we start to bring pressure and either get the stop or allow them to score quickly because we need time for ourselves to be able to get it. And oh, we brought the pressure. We still dropped it for a loss of three. Maybe could have been a loss of four though. Two minutes and 15 seconds. Wind knocked out of that uh, maze, the wide receiver who caught that big pass. So that's a very interesting decision. This feels like it's gonna be a screen. It is, we've got Carter over there, some extra body there. We read the play right, third and 12. And I gotta start thinking about when to use timeouts. Georgia is thankfully still in the uh, hurry up as this feels like it could be the exact same play. So we're gonna go cover it with Carter. We've stopped him for now. Royal with the interception and Royal maybe a chance to do something magical. Oh. The ball hawk from the safety. He's got us in prime position to win the national championship. And just like that, things have turned on their head for Georgia. We were able to shut down the screen. I don't know why they would go to that twice in a row. And now with a minute and 37, a field goal could win this thing. But we got to hold on to the football. And more importantly, we got to move the football. Uh, <laughs> nice voice crack there, I guess. We slide it down for a gain of eight. Clock's at 115. Stepping back, looking to throw on this one. Oh, gosh. B's open. Can we get it there? Jody Gentry catches it and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. First and 10 now. Again, stepping back to pass. What do we got? Over the middle, Curtis comes down with it short of the line to gain. Clock is moving. And we'll see if this is going to be the right play, but I've called him another mid-screen. They covered it way too well. Nothing that we can do except for try to run, and Maurice Tate breaks a little tackle. Steps out of bounds, but 48 seconds. Oh, it's getting scary. I don't think this one ends well for us if it goes to overtime. I just feel like Georgia has good one-play firepower where they could get into the end zone at ease. And it's taken us a little bit more effort to get there in the same amount of time. Waiting. We just got to give it to Chris Rutger. Can't get the step back cheese, but he does stop the clock with a first down. Maurice took one hell of a shot on that play, trying to stick in there and make the throw, and it worked out in our favor. Again, they're not really bringing a whole lot of pressure. A is wide open. Brian Curtis, they're saying he came down with it. We got to go in the hurry up before they review that. Oh, and they're going to check it anyways. We're not quick enough. I think he was out. I threw that ball a little bit late. Curtis with a great grab going up and get it. No, he's in. Both feet. That's good on Sundays. That'll kind of allow us to stop and breathe. And it stands. Well, I hate to say it, but I feel like this could be field goal range for us. I know the wind at this point is in our face, so not certain what we can do, but we'll hand it off. And Derek Bentley up the middle centers it. We're going to force them to start taking their timeouts. What can we do here? Giving it to Lionel Goodwin with 20 seconds in the national championship. It seems like a dangerous idea, but Lionel setting us up perfectly. 
15 seconds, it's third and one. Well, I made a mistake and accidentally had to call two timeouts there, but with 15 seconds left, we're going to hand it off to Derek Bentley just to burn a couple of more seconds off this clock, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. So the clock will burn down here. Georgia should try to ice us, but they're not going to. Snapping it with three seconds. We're going to win the national championship game on a walk-off field goal, 20-17. to 17. Georgia fought their way through as the seventh seed in the bracket. Took out number two, took out number three, but couldn't take out number one. Oh, we've done it. Not at the right venue. Should have been at SoFi Stadium, but a national championship for the Gray Boys in an ESPN Classic game. And it all starts with a huge interception on the other end to set us up for a big drive and an eventual field goal to win it. The offense struggled throughout the entire second half, but was able to get it done when it mattered the most in the defense. Man, how about stepping up in the clutch, force them into a difficult situation where they had to throw up a tough ball and the quarterback's got to be kicking himself there. Luke Clark, player of the game with his two field goals, including the game winners. They can give us well, the wrong trophy, but we'll just close our eyes and pretend that that's the modern day college football playoff trophy. We can hold up the newspaper. Maurice Tate is an uh, he's a college football champion and we've got more uh, ready to go here in the future but I gotta say next year is going to be 10 times more difficult I don't know if it's actually going to be 10 times more difficult but it's going to be much much more difficult we're going to handicap ourselves because a run like this with the 78 79 overall team should be a little bit more difficult not to say we didn't struggle not to say I didn't play well in some games but uh, be ready for things to get really, really chaotic. So at the end of it, oh, a big 10-point fourth quarter to get us back in the lead at the last second. We outrushed Georgia even as well as Boyd was doing. Uh, they outpassed us by a couple of yards. A close game through and through. It's just the time of possession really goes in our favor. Both quarterbacks throwing an interception. Again, Luke Clark, the kicker, is our offensive player of the game along at 35. Uh, looking good, playing well. Nobody else really stood out on offense either, so I think that's well-deserved. And then Devin Royal with the game ceiling potentially interception. He stepped up. If he would have missed on that interception, it's a touchdown for Georgia. So a risky play, but it paid off at the end. With all of that, we have won the college football playoff national championships. We can add that to our profile and we can officially consider ourselves the national champions after a hard fought season. But like I said, uh, if we thought this season was at all hard, next season's going to be light years ahead. Hopefully we can get that going soon. Again, work is kind of put me in a weird spot with uh, trying to find the time to get these recordings done. But thank you guys for sticking with me through it all. Hopefully we can get again a little bit more regular. And I am so excited to see the recruiting class that we get, but also the challenges that next season they're going to bring because it's going to be uh, quite a lot, I would say. We're going to make things pretty hard on ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can get notified when new videos come out every month or so, <laughs> at least at this rate. After that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, as well as the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our TO3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.